horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Wild and untamed west of yesteryear, with all of its stirring action, is brought back to us in a vivid word picture as the phantom figure of the plains rides on another exciting adventure. Listen to those silver shod hoofs racing down the trails of old. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver old boy. We have a big job to do. Now is waiting for us somewhere ahead. I own silver. Jim Burton had made himself absolute master of a large district in the southwest. All who lived in that territory were forced to pay him tribute or suffer the consequences. His men, outlaws and hired gunmen, openly punished those who refused to pay. Homes were stripped, buildings burned, cattle stolen or poisoned. Men who stubbornly defied Burton were murdered. The gang had become so powerful that the law was helpless. In the first scene of tonight's story, we see Burton and his lieutenant, Bat Jordan, riding to the home of a rancher named Tyler. How much do you mean Tyler, Horse? Tyler? Well, let me look at the book here. Just a second, Burton. Well, don't be all day finding it. Yeah, here it is. He ain't paid for last month yet. Oh, he ain't, huh? Well, I'll have to teach him a lesson. That's his prize bull over yonder, ain't it? Yeah. All right. That got him. (laughs) Hey, what? Stop it. Burton, look at what you've done. Ain't that a downright shame? I read over here to have a talk with you, Tyler. Why, you... you... Just an accident, that's all. I'm mighty sorry. I was just looking at my gun and went off and got that bull. Accident, my eye! Accidents do happen, Tyler. Yep, that's why it's smart to keep signed up with my company. Now, if only you'd paid up your fee last month, I'd have stood the loss of that bull. And because I didn't pay you, you shot the critter. I wouldn't be so quick to say things like that, Tyler. Especially when they can't be proved in court. Court? Everyone's afraid of you. You run the court the same as you run the sheriff and everything else in this part of the country. You'd be smart to pay up your dues and button up your lip, Tyler. You know, I think that just the fact that a man has signed up with me is enough to keep thieves and troublemakers away. Now, look at how all my clients have been let alone. And look at how thieves have troubled them that ain't been registered with me. I know. When Bob Frisbee refused to pay you, he lost a hundred head of cattle from poison pool. Then when he still held out, his house catch fire. Bad accident. I was sorry to see Bob wiped out like that. Yes, you was. And then there was Hank Fenton. My, but he had a streak of tough luck. Remember, Jordan, how them prowling thieves kept busting in his house and taking things? Yeah, he done well to sign up with us. His house is likely to catch fire easy. Yeah. Well, enough of that. Mr. Tyler, you owe just fifty dollars. That'll bring your payments right up to date. I ain't got no $50. No? 
Seems to me you sold some cattle last month. Ain't you been paid for it? I sent the cash to my niece at Red Bluff. That's bad. That's mighty bad. You should have thought of your own protection. Look here, Burton. I ain't a man to ask favors, but I've got to. My niece Betsy lost her pawn. She's coming here to live with me. Hmm, so you sent her all your money, huh? Her paw had some debts that she wanted to clean up before she left there. Now look here, Burton. Just leave me alone and I'll pay you. I'll pay up in time if you just let me be. Tyler, I wouldn't do anything to you. You seem to think that I'm behind all the trouble around here. You ain't fooling me, Burton. Everyone knows about your gang and how you tell them to go to work on anyone that won't pay you. Well, when do you look for this niece of yours to get here? As soon as you can. Might be tomorrow, or next week, or next month. Well, we'll be on the way. I sure hope you'll be able to pay up what you owe, Tyler. Been quite a long dry spell. There ain't no telling when a man's house might catch fire. Hey, yep. Uh, yep. Come on, gentlemen. We'll go call on Mrs. Simmons. She's behind in the payments, too. Yeah, come on. Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Tad rat it. Rat. That poor bull. He ain't dead. I gotta take care of him. I'll go get my gun. Tyler, pull back back. Here, two shots? Yes. If there's a third. Three shots, Tonto. That's always a danger sign. That's right. No man fires three shots in space like that unless he wants help and wants it bad. Shot come from that way. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Get him up. Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were riding along the trail when they heard the three shots. Throughout the West, three spaced shots were known as the signal of distress. The masked rider lost no time answering what he believed to be a call for help, and soon he and Tonto pulled their horses to a stop alongside of old Tyler, who stood beside the dead bull. Oh, 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 oh. What's the trouble here? Trouble? A plenty trouble. But you're talking to the wrong man, stranger. How's that? I reckon you're looking for the boss of all the outlaws, Jim Burton. Well, he went to see poor old widow Simmons. Reckon he'll be drilling her cattle about now. Didn't you fire three shots for help? Sir? Huh? I'm no outlaw. Came here because I heard three space shots. Oh, land sakes, I never thought of that. Gosh, stranger, I didn't mean to signal for help, even though the good Lord knows I need it plenty bad. I fired them shots to put this bull out in his suffering. Jim Burton purposely shot this critter just because I ain't paid him for protection. I see. Jim Burton, huh? Yeah. We hear a story about him. Yes. I didn't think there could be any truth in those stories. Stranger, ain't none of my affair. And a smart man don't ask too many questions. But why are you wearing that mask around here? I want you to tell me more about Jim Burton. Well, if you ride hard for the first White House you come to heading that way, you'll likely catch him talking to Witter Simmons. Very well. If she don't tell you all you want to know about Jim Burton, just come on back here, and I'll tell her plenty. Come on, Silver. I had to give him a last penny or the chances are my house would have catch fire tonight. Doesn't the sheriff do anything to stop that sort of thing? The sheriff? He can't do anything. No one can ever prove that Burton's the one that does all these things. Not even the United States Marshal can do anything about it. Why don't all of you band together and refuse to pay him? They ain't no one with spunk enough to even speak again him. Except an old man, Tyler, and me. I tell you, stranger, just to tell everyone I get the chance to tell. Jim Burton's the orneriest skunk that ever breathed. You go ask Tyler to tell you a few things that he's done. I'm going to. The Lone Ranger gathered all the information he could find concerning Jim Burton and his men. Among other things, he learned that many members of the gang were wanted by the law in other sections of the country. This knowledge suggested a way to break Burton's power. In town the next day, the men were gathered in the cafe. The masked man suddenly appeared in the doorway, his two heavy six-guns covering every person in the room. Hold it! Every 
of you. Stand still. It's a sticker. It's no robbery. The man I want is Scar Lewis. Hold on there, mister. Grab him. Take his mask off. Don't try it. I'll show you. Do my hand. Leave your guns alone. Come on, Lewis. You're wanted for murder in Pecos. Burton! He ain't going to let him get me. Burton has nothing to say. Come on. Now, oh, let me go. Let me go. I'm covering the rest of you with one gun. Stay where you are. I'll be back, Burton, for some more of the crooks that you're shielding in this town. Now, let me go. Jim! Help me! Help me! Help me! During the next three days, the townspeople talked of nothing but the daring action of the masked man. We hear Burton and Jordan, with two of their men, discussing the matter on the porch of the general store. He must have taken Scar all the way to Pecos. I reckon he must have. Just who's he think he is, Burton? He ain't no right to drag a man across a county line that way. He's wearing a mask, too. If he comes back here, Butch, you better duck for cover. You're wanted in red bluff. That's where he's going. Huh? What? Why, you? He come from the side of the building. You won't come get on, me. Butch. Burton, keep back. You too, Jordan. See you here, stranger. Hey, Silver. They say you're pretty slippery, Butch. I'll put a rope on you. Stop him, Burton. Jordan, stop him. And more of your gang that I want, Burton. I'll be back. Let me down. You can't let me on your horse like this. You're going to Red Bluff, Butch. Yep. hi yo Within the next two weeks, the Lone Ranger struck at Burton's gang four more times. He appeared when least expected, forced an outlaw to go with him, and made his escape before his surprised victims could defend themselves. In all, he had taken six of Burton's men, and the gang leader was furious. We see Burton with Jordan, considering a method to get rid of the Lone Ranger. If that man is the Lone Ranger, he wouldn't touch you unless he had proof of something to give you. I don't know about that. Maybe we've seen the last of him. I hope not. Jordan, I ain't gonna rest till I see that man shot, unmasked, and planted six foot deep. As for me, I'm willing to let well enough alone. Well, I ain't. I'll get him, Jordan. It was the last thing I do. Uh, Mr. Burton. Huh? Oh, it's you, huh, Tyler? You're about due to pay me some money. I know. Did you bring it with you? I, I ain't no money. Well, I ain't waiting no longer. Now, Mr. Burton. You pay up or there might be some accidents happen on the trail to Red Bluff. An accident that might affect this niece you're expecting. Wait. Won't you listen to me? Money talk's the only language I care to listen to. There's something we'll talk louder. What? Look. You'd like to get this Lone Ranger, wouldn't you? I'd give up plenty to get him. Well, if, if I showed you where you could trap him... Would you call what I owe you square and give me your protection for, for a few more months? For the rest of your life. That's what it means to me to get that mask, man. He's made things too darn tough around here. Do you know where he's at? Well, do you? Uh, yeah. I think I can find him. Sit down there, Tyler. Oh, thanks. I don't mind if I do. Where's the Lone Ranger? I, uh, I ain't saying I know where he is. You don't know? Why, you old four-flusher, you? Wait. I know where he will be. Ain't that something? Where? Come on, speak up. Where? Now, let me tell it my own way. I got a scheme all worked out so you can get him. Well, that's here. Uh, you promised me that you won't make me no trouble. I told you I wouldn't. And you won't make no trouble for my niece, Betsy? No, of course not. All right, then it's a deal. Listen close, gents. And I'll tell you how to get the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. You will recall that in the first act of tonight's drama, the Lone Ranger learned of Burton's crooked activities. And in a series of daring raids, the masked man carried off those of Burton's men, known to be outlaws. In the meantime, Burton tried desperately to defend himself against the Lone Ranger's attacks. Let us pick up the threads of our narrative as Tyler completes the outline of his plan. Now, let me get this straight, Tyler. You're to show me where to get this Lone Ranger. In exchange for that, I'll see that you're protected from trouble of all sorts. It's a deal, then. You don't know when this uh, niece of yours is coming, do you? No. She ought to be getting here soon, though. She was only going to stay in Red Bluff till she paid up her Paul's debts, then take her horse and ride down here. Maybe if she's good looking, I might take her to a couple parties. Now, hold on. One other thing I want in that agreement, Burton. Well? Jordan and none of the rest of your bunch are to come annoying Betsy. Oh, now, Tyler. All right, I'll see they don't. You hear that, Jordan? Yeah, I hear it. Now, suppose you tell us how I aim to get this lone ranger where we can get at him. Well, there's an Indian friend of his. I heard about him. His name's Tonto. That's right. What's Tonto got to do with it? I know where to capture the Indian. Yeah? You see, him and the Lone Ranger have been friendly with me. The engine has been to my place several times already, and he'll be back again. Mm-hmm. Now, if you was to capture Tonto, the Lone Ranger would blame seem to know about it. Yeah, I suppose he would. All right. Then what'll he do? Come riding like lightning with a couple of guns blazing? You needn't fear about being shot. The Lone Ranger never shoots to kill. He'll come in fighting fair. What about it? When he comes along the trail where you men are holding Tonto, making out to torture him so as he'll tell where the masked man is, he'll hit a pitfall. Pitfall? Sure. You boys dig a deep hole in the ground, then cover it with branches and things so he won't see it. He drops to the bottom of it, and that finishes it. My thunder, Tyler. You got an idea there. Why don't we just blaze at him with our guns? I'll tell you why, Jordan. You ought to know already. You tried to shoot him once before, and one of them silver bullets blasted your six-gun out in your hand. And blame near broke my hand. Of course. If he sees any of us drawing a gun, why... He let you have it. That's right, Jordan. Tyler's right. You wouldn't have a Chinaman's chance of getting him. Just don't pay no attention to him, and let him come at us and drop into the pit. How do we know he'd get killed? What if he was to capture a few rattlers and put them in the pit? Rattlers? Sure. When he falls in the pit... They'd finish him. Sure they would. What's more, I'll provide them. Can you get them? Sure I can get them. Tyler, it seems to me that you're doing a lot to get the man that sort of worked on your behalf. How come? I'd do anything to make my home safe for my niece Betsy when she gets here. Yeah, I see. We'll follow out that scheme. Jordan, get the boys together. We'll dig the pit and then we'll leave it up to Tyler to lead us to capture that engine tunnel. The Lone Ranger had captured all of Burton's men who had criminal records. But Burton himself was still free. Our next scene opens in the masked man's hidden camp. He and Tonto are speaking of the gang leader. We can't put another one of them in jail, Tonto. The rest have no crimes chalked against them. Mm, That bad. And even if they had, the one man we must get is Jim Burton. Mm, That right. None of the others count. We can replace them as fast as we can capture them. Burton is the man who must be jailed. What jail him for? That's the problem. There's not a thing that can be proved against him. You know Sheriff here? I've talked to the Sheriff. He's honest, and he'd like to see Jim Burton's power broken just as much as we would. But his hands are tied. Oh. Here, white fella. You're leaving now? Uh, I'm going to go see old man. Very well. Maybe someday we get Burton fella. Here's hoping, Kimosabe. Uh. See you by and by. Yes, Tonto. Get him up, white fella. Tonto, riding to Tyler's home entered the trap set by Burton. The faithful Indian drew his horse to a stop before the ranch house, prepared to dismount, 
and was immediately surrounded by the outlaws who advanced upon him with drawn guns. All right, Indians, just be quiet. Oh, what's this? Watch your hands there, Redskin. You're captured. You got him. Make a move and we shoot. Watch him. We're watching him. Move him tight. Are you double cross, Fred? Sorry, Indian, but I had to do it. Pull those ropes tight. He won't get loose. You double cross. It was you or me, Indian. Uh -huh. No, Redskin. It's you or the Lone Ranger. Yeah, you got just one chance to save your neck. What you mean? Tell us where to find the Lone Ranger and we let you go free. Uh, <laughs> not Tyler, feller. Him double cross. It was you or me. You better do the same thing and lead us to the Lone Ranger if you know what's good for you. Me not double cross. Oh. So you figure you won't tell us, huh? Mm, not right. We got ways of making any man talk. Tonto not talk. We'll see about that. Take him to the post, boys. Yeah. Here's where we see just how much pain an engine can stand. Keep a close watch on him. Don't give him a chance to get free. Jordan, you ride ahead with Tonto and them others. Yeah, me and Tyler will follow you. Come on. Come on. Fight at all. No, he seen there wasn't no use against such odds. I wonder if the Lone Ranger will come after him. I'm betting on it. Just look at the ground around here, how it's trampled. The Lone Ranger will see the Tonto don't get back to the camp. Then he'll come, see the signs, and follow the trail. Mm, I hope so. All you have to do is keep the engine at that post just beyond the pit until the Lone Ranger comes. Good. Unless he spots our trail, she's where we went around the pit. Chucks, he won't do that. When he gets that close, he'll see his engine friend being tortured and come riding hard with eyes on us instead of on the trail. That's reasonable, I suppose. How about the Rattlers? Well, Burton, I had to change that part some. What? Yeah. You see, I managed to trap a mountain lion alive. I figured on trying to get bounty for it. When I seen how vicious the critter was, I thought it'd be better to put that in the bottom of the pit instead of the Rattlers. It's all the same. No man or none. That's the way I figured. Bound with strong rope, was carried by Burton's men to a point along the trail that led from Red Bluff to town. There, within sight of the trail, he was tied to the stump of a dead tree. Not far beyond them could be heard the cries of the mountain lion supplied by Tyler, marking the location of the pitfall prepared for the lone ranger. We hear the outlaws as they wait for the masked man to appear in search of his companion. How much longer do you think you'd better wait, Burton? Yes, we waited about long enough. That blame mountain lion down in the pit smells horses. Yeah, he's downright hungry. I reckon I'll move back to cover and have a look at him. Don't you do it. Why not? Them critters can leap higher than a man's head. He might get out. Tyler's right. Yeah, he's sure making a plenty of noise. Yeah, he's pretty hungry. Oh, by the way. Well? I hope you made that pit deep enough. Sure we did. Took a lot of us all night to dig it. Big enough for a man and a horse to drop in? Sure. Well, Burton, why don't you start on the Redskin? We maybe should wait till we see the old ranger coming along the trail. Oh, what's the sense in that? Well, you seem mighty anxious for things to get hot for the Redskin, Tyler. Well, taking part in murder don't appeal to me. Uh, I, I want to get it over with. Murder? This is your first murder, too, ain't it, Burton? Mine? Sure. I figure you never take the risk of killing a man. <laughs> Listen to him, Jordan. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, have you? Tell him about the Parker affair, Burton. <laughs> yeah, the law ain't never found out about who done for Jack Parker. Did you? Well, I wouldn't admit it to the law, but of course... You I... covered your tracks pretty slick on that job, boss. And you must have been the one that knifed Tank Green. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him, man. Oh, but I don't reckon you was. Green was a pretty tough hombre. To take a sight of nerve for a man to fight him. Well, I done it. You did? Sure. Hey, someone coming. Take a look. Stand ready with them lashes to handle Tonto with. Oh. That ain't the Lone Ranger. That's my niece. Your niece? Yeah. She's heading down the trail. She'll fall into that hole. Stop her. Right ahead and stop her. We can't. There ain't none of us near to our horses. If she drops into that, we'll miss getting the Lone Ranger. Get for the horses. Hurry. They're behind them trees. We can't get to them in time. There's the Lone Ranger. He was behind them trees with the horses. How'd you get there? Ride! Ride, Mr. Save Betsy! Come on! Help us! 
He's getting to her. Thank the good Lord he'll get her. Look at him travel. He's got her. He saved Betsy. All right, Tyler. Now, suppose you tell how he happened to be where he was. All right, Burton, I will tell. I can tell you now because you talked all you needed to. What? The whole thing was staged just to get you to show your hand. What's that? Keep your gun on, Tyler. There's something funny here. You won't think it's so funny. We wanted you to show yourself when all your men are murders. You done that by setting this death trap. Well? Then I got you to talking about other murders you done. You see, Burton? Now there's enough on you to hang you. Yeah, well, ain't that interesting. Thought I double-crossed the Lone Ranger, huh? Well, it was him and Tonto and me that staged the whole thing for your benefit. I had the Lone Ranger behind them trees to hear what we said. There ain't no one else back there, boss. No. And when Tonto and Tyler are done for, there ain't no one but the masked men to know what was said there. And we're shooting him as soon as he gets in gun range. Get ready, boys. Oh, no, you won't. Why? Because after you gents finished with that pitfall, the sheriff took it over. And now he's got plenty of evidence against you. With deputies to back my hand. What? What oh, other? They've been hid down there to hear the whole thing with ladders to climb out on. All the rest of that brush aside, boys. We, we got all we need. It's a frame up. We've got to shoot our way out. Come on. Don't no, stand steady. Cover them from behind. And I've got guns on you from here. Mask, friend, cut rope. Give Tonto gun. You want to... Oh! Don't anyone else try to use a gun. You see, Burton, it's downright foolish to try and beat the Lone Ranger's gun. Oh, you... As for that lion, you fool cat, <laughs> that's an old toothless mountain cat that's just as tame as a kitten. But he kept you boys from trying to look in the pit. We got you, Burton, and your men with you. Thanks, Tyler, for helping to tap these men. Sakes alive, mister. You repaid me in full. You saved Betsy's life. She's waiting for you beyond the pit bull. Hi-yo, you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.